I was offered a BBL, yo. Not a BBL. You lie. I was offered liposuction. You lie. Or any surgery of my choosing. I could from, get from. I could get my teeth done. I could from that place. Yeah, yeah. In okay, Turkey. Same, 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 same. Like they also gave me the image. They also want to do your body. <laughs> and you're like, should I? Should no, I? I was like, should I get some boobies? <laughs> like, should I go? Should I not go? Should I get some they boobies? They also opened. They sent me a message. They're like, oh my god, we like your content. Yeah. Come and enjoy a Turkish delight. <laughs> I can't believe we got the same message. The same message. That is so crazy. Parent-child relationships are the first example we receive on how to interact with the rest of the world. Mm. In our adulthood, it affects us deeply with our romantic relationships, with our friendships, in our in our work environment. Guys, when your parents are yeah. not in love and they stay under the same roof, yeah. worst experience of your life. If right now you are a parent and you are not in love, and you are staying You're there for your you. kids. You are actually hating your kids. Yeah, men it. love themselves. I mean, love themselves. Ah, they will always bad. choose themselves. I'm telling you. A man will choose himself. Very unrelated. If this you think a man reason. loves you, it's because he's choosing himself. <laughs> what? And choosing himself means choosing you at that time. Ooh. All of this new stuff is really new to me. I've never been one to conform to beauty standards. And I grew up in a completely opposite environment. Yeah. Really, we, we, we had no mm -hmm. room to like focus on other things. So mm -hmm. that's the environment I grew up in. Beauty standards were everything. Sure. That makes sense though. It, it makes sense for how, how you viewed yourself when you were younger and why you viewed yourself that way. It's because of your environment. <laughs> Hello, hello, hi, it's your girl, Mommy Dearest. Hi, hi, I'm Kai, aka Adi. And welcome to Thought Digest, where we amplify conversations one, one thought, thought at a time. time. Welcome, 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 guys. It's been two weeks or three weeks. Two. It's been a very long time. Yeah. But like, we will apologize nicely and properly. But before we even get into this episode, yes. we know we need to leave you guys with a beautiful affirmation. <laughs> So, Kaya, what's your affirmation for this week? Uh, my affirmation for this week is that I am covered in grace and I will not let anyone profit off of me not knowing who I am. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Everyone, yeah. That's a nice way to start your morning. Nah? That is your it nice is way to start. covered in grace. Oh, my God. Um, what's yours? My affirmation is I am the light of this world and i will light it up like basically as you do always yeah just being the light of the world no matter what no matter the circumstance no matter no, the dark no, clouds no, no, it's come rain or shine light of the world yeah so i challenge you guys to follow at cappy africa and be a part of the exclusive cappy collab by clicking the link in cappy africa's bio on social media to sign up and share your, your affirmations, affirmations. <laughs> her, 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 let's get into the episode life updates yes oh my god um life update okay guys let's so get comfortable let's get it's cold. been a while <laughs> it's been a very long time guys a it's lot a can while. happen in three weeks yeah a lot can happen in three weeks so i guess I'm starting there yeah okay you so always start because you are always so eager and you have the better memory between the two of us but i'm trying to think i'm using my vlogs to remember my life updates mm -hmm. go follow me on youtube please and watch my videos please. thank you so much why watch the here, ads not watch just the, the ads guys <laughs> even here on thought digest you guys aren't watching the ads y'all skip our ads and please it's november december like now is the most important time to watching the ads guys please the cpm is there do not skip an ad. Otherwise, we're going to go bankrupt as Thought Digest and you guys are never going to see us again. It's true. See, please watch the ads. It's true. But anyways, um, my life update is um, I got an apartment for yes. my family. Yes. I think I told you guys this. Yes, you did. I told you guys about getting the apartment. So we finally moved it's in. It's not an apartment. Okay. I don't know what it is. It's a house. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is. So I got There's no such thing as a four bedroom. Of, it's a house. So I got my family a four bedroom house. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so we moved in. We finally moved in. Yes. It was very difficult, guys. The moving in process is so expensive. Mm. And guys, yeah, no, it's very expensive. And it's so difficult. It was so tiring. Mm -hmm. I was so tired that week. And furniture is expensive, guys. Furniture is so expensive. It is super duper expensive. I'm actually going to disagree with that. I don't know if I can. Okay, um, a close somebody close to me moved out, right? And How I've been not a lot, dude. Like if you get, for instance, for the couch, they paid a decent amount, and it's a massive couch. Mm -hmm. It's it's about four times the size of this couch. What's decent? About an eight seater couch. 
what massive decent. couch and they paid about seven thousand rand. To be fair, yes, it can happen. Like I it was realize, made from you scratch. You need to know people. Like yes. you need to follow these agents. Please send me the link of them. Yes, thank I you so will. much. Yeah, please give them to me. I will. Um, yeah, please. And a lot of the other things in the house weren't extremely pricey. Like the television was also a good a good deal. Like he got I think a quarter of he paid a quarter of the original price hmm. for that TV. Where did he get the TV? Facebook market. I Where did like they get the TV? For me, <laughs> I think things are expensive because yeah. like, it was a thing of like, you see when you're buying for one person, yeah. it's fine. Yeah. So like, it was a thing of like, oh, I, I bought see, I see, three see. beds in one day. I see. Three beds. How much is one I bed? See. How much is one bed? I see. I am financially stretched. Overstretched. <laughs> Deep broke, guys. Ningan di me this December. three beds in one day is madness do not remember me this december do not call me anywhere unless you're gonna pay the bill thank it's you very true. much out of love and care it's, it's not true. because i don't want to see you it's because i'm broke <laughs> so I, it's like a one person that but like i think once i got the beds out of the way mm. my heart eased yeah. because everything else you can like buy slowly yeah, so like the couch maybe we'll get the couch in gen because mm -hmm. i can't do it now yeah um so like the couch can mm. come slowly but we definitely need a tv stand now mm -hmm. and i so like deco fan has like affordable tv stands mm -hmm. or you can get one made, made there's yeah. always those options and yeah. I, I need a headboard like mm. i i was zero but i i'm so sorry to my ex what i remember judging what? that man oh for not having a headboard not having a headboard not having i don't a couch. understand what the hype about headboards is to be honest not i I'd never i've never had a headboard i've never even thought of buying a headboard it That's doesn't fair. really matter to me <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. But, but I you, guess it brings like some kind like of like it just beauty, elevates, elevates the, the space. Room, yeah, yeah, it really elevates the space. So yeah, so like it was like the buying the furniture thing. But I, you know what? Like even though it's like stressful, I always think of it like as blessings mm. because the fact that we have our own space yeah. and it's really spacious. Like yeah. guys, I don't know if I'm gonna send. I took a picture of myself. Like my mom took a picture of me while I was in the backyard. Yeah. I'm thinking of sending him just so you can see how big our backyard yeah. is. And it's like, oh my God, yeah. I'm so grateful to the Lord. So yeah. the Lord will provide has been yes, my yeah. motto for the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's shown that abundantly. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys so much for all your support because it wouldn't be possible mm -hmm. without everybody who supports us. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. So thank you guys. That's one half of my life update. The second half of my life update, funny enough, is I had written on my calendar for today's shoot that I will testify, right? Mm -hmm. And I still have a testimony, even though it comes with sad news. Mm -hmm. So um, I failed my honors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I failed my honors. Don't feel sorry for me. Mm -hmm. Don't cry. Mm -hmm. Don't anything. I think most... The, the biggest thing for me, I was proud of myself for reaching the end mm -hmm. because it was such a hectic year. There were so many mm -hmm. times I felt like dropping out and just going full throttle on work yeah. so I can support home. Mm -hmm. So I was going through those conflicting emotions. So I didn't really give my honors year my 100%. Mm -hmm. I gave it like 50%, you know. And, and that was what you had to give at the time. Yeah, that's that was my capacity. Yeah. That was me at my capacity, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and even in that, uh, what you call this, God still gave me another opportunity. So mm -hmm. in my university, if you fail on this, there's mm -hmm. a chance you are not allowed to do it again mm -hmm. at the university. Mm -hmm. So if I wasn't allowed to do it again at my university, it means that my birth year was going to let me go. Mm -hmm. So to be able to do it again, you need an average of 40%. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't feel like... <sighs> fail yeah <laughs> my average is 40 percent 40 something percent yeah so, so which so is are you gonna are you gonna do it again? yes i'm taking the opportunity Woo! i am taking the opportunity okay um, <laughs> i'm gonna take because i feel like god's that's so different from what you said a week ago that's so funny ago. like yeah. a month ago i was like i'm never doing this again yeah you know but then when i said i, I feel like that's where the testimony comes okay when, like when i said and i thought about it and i saw how blessed i was how god has been so faithful to me and i don't think he would keep the door open if it was something i was meant to leave yeah there's a reason why he's keeping the store open because mm -hmm. like i have so many people who are so heartbroken because they are not they can't come back to the university so mm. many people are losing my bursary mm. so many so it's a thing of like oh my god you and those are people who are at the library every day mm. who only had school mm -hmm. you know so how shattered and how heartbroken must they be mm. and god even in my 50 percent mm. still pulled through for me and mm. gave me an opportunity to do it again mm. and i feel like there's a reason for that you know mm. so i'm gonna attempt it again and i feel like this time 
I, I can only formula, no. Like, I, What's the formula? I guess it's hard work and I, I don't think there's anything that can happen in my life that could cause me to deter from my goals and my ambitions and mm. what God has set for me. Mm. There's nothing the devil can throw at me that will make me shake again. Like this mm. year taught me that it doesn't mean just because the waves are there, you should concentrate at them keep your eyes on jesus mm. keep your eyes focused you know mm -hmm. the devil will try to distract you with so many things but you must keep your eyes focused you know if you do not work you do not eat mm. and i want to eat i want to eat so i'm going to be posting twice as much on social media than i did this year and i'm going to get my cta mm -hmm. that is going to be a testimony we'll come back next year this yeah, time yeah i was about to say you should actually come back to this video <laughs> next, next year, year this time get la lubuta hand and i want to pass it not even bare minimum i want to be in the top 100 and of my grade and you will be and you will be yeah so, so did you just say per yeah cuz per <laughs> cuz per <laughs> okay guys yeah. why now what's your life update um sure what is my life? When have you been going? Shing. And like, I'm seeing these things and I'm just like, oh, I don't know how to be there for her. <laughs> Yo, I, I, I think, you know, time is, time is so essential to, to healing, to improvement, to growth. I, I thank God for time, you know, that the sun rises in the morning and we get to try again. So the past few weeks have been really difficult, um, mentally that is, because the whole body dysmorphia thing took a turn for the worst. Oh my God, took a turn for the worst. And um, thankfully, I think sometime last week I had called a friend of mine and she, she was speaking of, about something completely unrelated. She was speaking about how... Oh, she was thinking about why she went back to church, right, mm. years ago. And she said she was in a place in her life where she just needed God, you know. She felt so alone and deserted. And she felt so filthy that she couldn't look herself in the mirror. And she just needed God in that moment. Completely unrelated to my body image, um, self-esteem issues, very unrelated. But, but the, the, when she said that she couldn't look herself in the mirror at the time, and all she needed was God. That's all I needed to hear. Like, by virtue of me not being able to look myself in the mirror right now, what I need, who I need, it's is God. God. Right? Because he crafted me, you know? And he will craft me over and over again to his liking and for my good, you know? So, mentally, that was a really big struggle. And I think when it comes to mental health issues i always say it's buy one get seven free like once you notice there's an issue in this department of your mental health there will be another issue there will be anxiety there will be depression there will be <laughs> what up, what do they say about demons there is a reason why they are called legion Yo, they do not come in one them. there's no <laughs> such thing as there is a demon inside of you they are demon inside of you <laughs> they don't say i yeah. they say we, we. ah guys what are yeah. things but i that's i'm i'm happy to say that that's a war i've won fully fully now you are okay yeah you can ah. see the mirror and say wow i'm beautiful <laughs> please <laughs> please <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think that's been at the center of let me say just also my i, I wasn't as active on social media because mm. i didn't have the energy you know I, I, and i one thing i don't fake is energy if i can't do it i, I just I just can't do it you know so yeah that's a war i've overcome and i and i think it's important for christians to know that that is also a form of spiritual warfare mm. i think a lot of a lot of the times we are ha we have a one-dimensional view of what spiritual warfare looks like we think it's sickness we think it, uh it is sickness but we think it's limited to sickness or it's limited to financial struggle or it's limited to the the sleep paralysis that you experience um, spiritual warfare can come in the form of mental illness. Mm. It can come in the form of, you know, depression and suicidal ideation and all of these things. That too is, is spiritual warfare. Some, something in the spiritual realm doesn't want you to live and doesn't want you to live well. Mm. You know? um, and wants you to question everything about who you are, about who God is. And I was in that state. I was questioning everything. Mm. Oh, God, you know. And I, I saw less and less of my own value. 
Mm. That's not an inherent thing. That's an attack. And I'm glad that I recognize it as such in time. Not, not in time, but I recognize it as such, period. You mm. know? So that's my life update. Is, is my mic where it's supposed to be? Anyway. Yeah. I'm, that's my, <laughs> that's my I'm life I'm so update. glad. You know, funny enough, I also like experienced it mi- okay not mildly i also did experience body dysmorphia yeah. because i was offered a bbl y'all not a bbl you lie i was offered liposuction you lie or any surgery of my choosing i could from, get from i could get my teeth done i could from that place yeah yeah in okay, turkey same, 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 like same, they also gave me the image they also want to do your body <laughs> and you're like should i should no, I? I'm like, should I get some boobies? <laughs> like, should I go? Should I not go? Should I get some they boobies? They also offered, they sent a message, they're like, oh my God, we like your content yeah. to come and enjoy a Turkish delight. <laughs> I can't believe we got the same message. The same message, That is so crazy. And the thing is, I was, cons- I even gave them my number, like, you took me on WhatsApp. Yeah, I was like, hmm, I need some boobies. <laughs> That's crazy. We would have been taking together, my sister. Yeah, we would we'll, we'll find each other <laughs> at the, the airport. airport and be like, oh, oh no. no. <laughs> Why are you here? <laughs> that is so real. Because they gave me an option of a, any surgery of my choice. So I was going to get oh, like goodness. a 360 lipo. So I wasn't going to like get like anything added to me. I just wanted yeah. to remove my belly fat. Like all these things. I'm so, my back rolls. Everything yeah. I was self-conscious about. And a lot of people, it's like so funny enough, when the Lord not the lord when the devil gives you the idea yeah. you start to notice every other thing yes, in it as well yes. so now i'm starting to see more in kind of like the devil whispers in everyone's ears who can be used now is your time <laughs> because all of a sudden i'm starting to get comments on like my body yeah. my weight like oh have you not considered dieting mm. oh have you not considered that yeah. someone was like I, bro, I took a picture of oats this amount of oil mm-hmm. with apples on top and someone's like do you know that's what contributes to your weight gain the audacity oh y'all i was like you guys have been condemned by ice spice please <sighs> how, how she's you? not even eating her oats anymore <laughs> wow that is so real that is so real because y'all really have us like going through the most. Yeah, uh, uh. So like I was really thinking about it yeah. and i was like oh guys imagine i go to that surgery table and i die and I died because of a BBL. <laughs> I died because of life. That is the most degrading and worst way to die. <laughs> if there's a top list of a hundred ways not to die, is under a surgery oh table, God. not because of health reasons, so but because you want to look nice bastard. for the world. <laughs> I'm so bastard. And that's, that's, I think it's lovely that we're moving in that direction because that's our long topic. So if I will get there. If you're a newbie, you know what's in store. Yeah. Goodness gracious, I'm so dusted. Ariana, what are you doing here? We're at the airport. We're <laughs> like, it's you. Are you here for wink wink? So I decided to just like get a Shane order yeah. of like gym wear. Yeah. So I'm gonna like do my six seventy five hard. I'm gonna yeah. lose weight the proper way. Yeah. I'm gonna run, I'm gonna everything because I don't like my weight, not because of what you guys have to say, but because there's certain items I wanna wear. Yeah. And those items require certain mm-hmm. weight. Yeah. You know, a certain look. Yeah. So I'm doing it for myself. Yeah. Also, I think some of the best advice that I've received over the past two weeks um, is if you're not changing it, you're choosing it. Mm. So i saw that that, as well. that rocked me that got me out of bed immediately i said okay you know what <laughs> let me change my life right now because it, it's the truth you know if you're not changing your if you're not changing anything about the body that you don't like then you're choosing that body that you don't like if you're not, not through sejar you know maybe 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 but guys i have a feeling you know I'm, i feel like i'm that child you know, when everybody goes and steals and gets away with it, I go and I steal. <laughs> I'm the one who gets Bruh. caught. Bro, what did you eat today? I feel like I'm that child. You're like extra funny. Like <laughs> <laughs> No, but like, to be real, I don't mind. I have nothing against it. Like, oh there's an Instagram, she's a TikToker. Mm-hmm. I think she's done surgery before she documented a surgery thing. What's her name? She got engaged recently. Kayla. No, not engaged Kayla. Re- engaged recently. Yeah, I don't know. She 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 got engaged to a white man. Uh Lerato. Yeah. And I, <laughs> Why is and, I was, and I was like, her body for someone who got a BBL, mm-hmm. it doesn't look like a BBL body. It's so 
nice like mm-hmm. normal nice yeah. it's not like exaggerated normal it's, nice yeah it's not exaggerated it's not anything it's like oh wow ah. i didn't even know she had one until yeah. someone brought it up when i was yeah. telling them about this thing and then they're uh. like no you can just call about those like thingy and i was like uh. oh really uh-huh. and i thought about it but i'll try the gym if it doesn't work out <laughs> i might be in turkey like you're contradicting yourself so bad yo. but then guys <laughs> i'm so scared y'all if it wasn't fear if it wasn't about fear I would have been there. I would have been on the plane yesterday. I don't know about BBLs, man. Not about like BBL, lipo, like when someone. Yeah, lipo, cool. Like I, I probably also get lipo after I have maybe my eighth or ninth child. Oh, I was looking know? at her. Like I was like, no, <laughs> relax, <laughs> relax. After baby number eight or nine, then I'll get lipo. But um, when it comes to BBLs, I think, ish, it's such a slippery slope because, in the beginning. Like the first year or two years when somebody gets a BBL, we're all like, wow. Huh. Like Beyonce, when Beyonce got a BBL, we could barely tell. She was doing where your hands had two separate and we could not tell who she had a BBL. Now? Now. Do you know what I'm saying? Even Summer Walker. When Summer Walker got her BBL, we're like, hmm, I like it. Picasso, first, first one year, two year. Now? It's like, hey. It's like, hey. You know what I'm saying? So like, these things require maintenance, yes, but also I feel like they move in the same direction as tattoos because we've seen with Zion Booty. Zion Booty mm. got this one and then she got that and she got that and she got that and she got that. Like, it's a never-ending... Okay, you, maybe likening it to tattoos is, is not the way to go. It but needs I would to be say renewed. It's, it's one of those things where, like, you grow an addiction to fixing, right? And mm. fixing the short way, you know, because she got... And then she got a BBL, then she got a reduction here, and then she reduced the breast. Now she's going to, and then she did her belly. Now she's gonna, and it's like, oh goodness, you end up you know? being a not doll. Even God will come and say, I don't know this body. Oh, I'm as love Zimba, umna. This is not what I needed in your mother's womb. Oh, guys, I feel like the weight of school is just, like, making me feel <laughs> I think so, too. Okay, let's move into our girl chat topic. Yeah. Um, so, we're going to be discussing parent-child relationships. Mm. Um, the science behind it, the psychology behind it, sociology behind it, all of that stuff. Um, I think parent-child relationships are the first example we receive on how to interact with the rest of the world. Mm. Um, and there, as a child, there's an, there's a dependence on your parents for safety, for security, for nurture, for care, sensitivity. And when you don't receive that, it determines your attachment style and it determines your brain chemistry and how you interact with the world in general. If there was a lack of security between you and your parents, you're all, you're going to live your life on high guard all the Mm. time in defense mode all the time. And I think... Sometimes we we need to revisit those relationships as uncomfortable as it may be because it is where everything else, you know, stems from. Even, I think, broken parent-child relationships, there, I'm, I'm a firm believer that we should at least attempt to repair them. Um, and we always say, I, I, I agree with people who say that forgiveness is not... Um, synonymous with or mutually inclusive with access just because you forgive somebody doesn't mean you have to give them access Access i completely agree Mm -hmm. but you you have to at least attempt at rebuilding that relationship and of course rebuilding takes two people there was a girl on tiktok who it it broke my heart she called her mother oh the birthday girl oh oh that broke my heart right because she says and she's she's you know being so sincere Mm. with her mom like I was expecting a call from you today. It's my birthday. And, and the, the mother, mother says, just I'm fair seven zine. And drop the phone. And hangs up. It was so heartbreaking. And while that is the reality for many children when it comes to their parents, in our adulthood, it affects us deeply with our romantic relationships, with our friendships, in our, in our work environment. And so I want to encourage her that maybe now may not be the the right time to reconcile or visit that relationship. It seems the mother has not had that Mm self-reflection that we spoke about the last episode. But in time, I encourage an attempt at 
fixing the relationship. Fixing the relationship. If the person's unwilling, that's when you step back and you say you've tried. I don't know if I'm pro fixing a relationship. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm pro it if the other person wants to also make an effort yeah. to fixing it, yeah. right? But I do believe in working through the ironing out the creases that relationship may have caused mm. in your life, you mm. know, like through therapy, through mm-hmm. talking to someone, through church, through something, you know, mm-hmm. praying about it with God, mm. all those things, you know, I'm very much encouraging of that because like mm. sometimes like trying to mend something with someone who doesn't want to mend just causes more cracks and mm. more heartbreaks That's and true. more pain That's and true. a lot, a lot, a lot, like, trust me, I know, like, yeah. I know, yeah, yeah, it's not personal. Yeah. Like, yeah. if someone is not willing to meet you the halfway that needs yeah. to be met, or they not don't realize the error in yeah. their ways, allow it. Allow like, it you too. just have to let them go, but you yeah. have to deal with whatever traumas those yeah. relationships resulted in. Yeah. You know, um, in my point of view, I agree with you. Like, yeah. you know, like parent-child relation that's the first form of relationship you know mm-hmm. like before you even form when a relationship with god like personally mm. that is the relationship you mm. form you know and, and as a child children come as blank slates like mm. that baby comes blank mm-hmm. you know and literally like we are a result of like the different factors and the different things we're exposed to mm-hmm. growing up you know mm-hmm. Uh, so even our relationship with our parents, we absorb a lot of who we are from who they are yeah. because they are our first points of contact, yeah. you know? So it's very, those, re- you know, that relationship is so vital. Yeah. It's so vital to, with how you operate in the world, yeah. how you do things, how you see things. Like I, br- I didn't realize how like, <laughs> it's so funny, like how when I was bad with money, mm-hmm. I was literally mimicking my father. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't see how, like, that was, like, a reflection of who he was. Mm-hmm. You know, a part of, like, why our relationship, like, thinking because he, like, he never supported us financially. Mm-hmm. And part and parcel of that is because he doesn't have money, but he works at government. Like, he always earned more than my mom, mm-hmm. but he never had the money she had. Mm-hmm. And it's because of he has a bad fi- a relationship with money. Mm-hmm. And I developed that bad relationship with money because I saw what he would do. Mm-hmm. You know, I did what he did. Mm-hmm. You know, the takeouts, the everything. Like, I literally mimicked his behavior. Mm-hmm. So that, like, so, like, your relationship with your parents and, like, what you take from them literally mm-hmm. affects a lot of things. Yeah. Even your relationship with money. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know that. Yeah. I think observation is also very, very important. You know, I think in your adulthood, observe your parents. And it may not even just be mother and father, your grandmother, Mm. your grandfather, your uncles, aunties. Observe them. And that's also, I think, another leg of the the brutal honesty needed for self-reflection is that sometimes the patterns that you exhibit are patterns that you've inherited Mm. and you've subconsciously inherited them because you know you are repeating what you're seeing and you think that it's normal and a lot of family patterns are not for instance there there are families krishan and her sister yeah spoke about how they were playing house as cousins and it was very normal for them to touch each other inappropriately as cousins because they were just playing house and that's all it is That, for me, is a prime example of how the family dynamic can normalize things that are absolutely vile. Do you know what I'm saying? Where older cousins are playing with younger cousins and mom and dad and all of that. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes you will, you will, you'll have to open doors that you subconsciously shut as a Mm. child so that you can you can improve and grow as as an adult Mm. you will have to sit down and remember that oh when i was six when i was six years old i was doing this with my cousin or whatever the case may be in in hindsight that was not what it was supposed to be Mm. do you know what i'm saying that's not a dynamic i was supposed to have with the family member or my father when i was seven years old said this to me and you know Mm. so those it, it's important to observe your family dynamic, observe the parent-child relationship. Um, and also, I think another, another discourse that needs to be had in light of parent-child relationships is giving grace to our parents. I think that that has its cap. Do you know what I'm saying? I'll give you grace for not knowing how to express your emotion because perhaps that w- you didn't grow up in an environment where it was safe to do so i'll give you grace for that but i won't give an adult grace especially if you're above 30 let's allow it i'm not giving you grace 
for not not being in control of your behavior as mm. a result of your trauma done because we always say that we can't control what happens to us but we can control how we, we respond, respond to it yeah. or how we we maneuver through life as a result it's absolutely true even for our parents we can't keep making excuses and say ah apartheid or do you know what i'm saying or an abusive grandmother and an abusive grandfather you're 60 something now come yeah. on you have children you have grandchildren we can no longer make excuses for you in that department we'll give you grace and we'll be patient with you but at some point you need you need some pushback and unfortunately like our parents don't take well to push back. They don't take well to correction. They don't. <laughs> they don't. They, don't, take don't well to they fully don't. Wrong. But we we are a generation that I believe is very you know very strong willed, and we can ex exercise that strong will in our families and put our foot down. I think you are too afraid of your parents when they don't even deserve that amount of reverence. Mm. Fear the fear the Lord more, guys. Yeah, God, more than you feel. And human I'm not beings. saying do not honor, honor your parents. Yes, honor your parents. Yes. Don't please. don't disrespect them. Don't disrespect them. But then, however, like, if in your adulthood, not as a child, like if you're still relying on your parents, you can't really tell them nothing. Sorry, sorry. You start <laughs> telling them nothing. Your frontal lobe is not fully developed, yes, so you yes. you don't even know whether what you are yes. fighting for is wrong or yes. right. When are you fighting to go outside to crew? Because sixteen. <laughs> please. Please. Even me, I'll beat you. <laughs> I'm talking about in a context where you are a fully independent yes. adult and you are no longer under um, your parents' instruction or yes. house and dependence and all of that. That's what I'm talking about. That's when you, again, after 25, front and low, you sit down. And you and say, you okay. And you down and you, you, you know, present these are your the strong will boundaries. and these are the boundaries and so on and so forth. Under that... And you're still under their roof. Just give it time. Be patient. Be patient. Yeah. Like, hold on. <laughs> um, but then, like, for me, yeah. it's like, um, I think another thing, another reason that it may honestly be important to have, like, adult conversations with your parents as an adult mm -hmm. and, like, expressing, like, the things that you didn't like and all those things. Yeah. I think it's very important for your own, like, learning. You know, like, I feel like you can, you are only able to give as much grace as you know like why the person did that mm -hmm. you know like ah, right. like if you don't yeah. know the root of why they may have done that or why they acted in this way it's very difficult to give them grace because mm -hmm. you don't understand what their thinking capacity was mm -hmm. then so like having open conversations with our parents is very important it doesn't matter whether they are from the 60s 70s mm -hmm. 80s like learning to have open conversations with them is so important because there's things that they can tell you that you can learn from mm -hmm. and learn not to repeat mm -hmm. because some behavior you will repeat subconsciously mm -hmm. without even being aware of you be like me when i have a child i'll never do this and i'll never do that mm -hmm. and i'll never do that and then you find yourself doing mm -hmm. that a b c yeah. and d you know mm -hmm. so it's like it's so important to like have conversations with your yeah. parents um i can't wait until we have somebody who will talk to us about attachment styles because attachment styles are also directly related to parent-child relationships um Answer our let me email, ask you, you know who you are <laughs> let me ask you a personal question Ooh. okay Ooh. now it's like let's go into our parent Ooh. relationships <gasps> is there something that you are angry or disappointed in your parents about not at all uh when i was younger i was actually speaking to my partner about this yesterday when i was younger i thought I, I perceive them as very selfish. I perceive them as standing in the way of what I thought I wanted. But I'm so grateful to my parents for not giving me what I thought I wanted at the time. Hmm. Because there was a time where I had the opportunity to be a performer in Hollywood. And they said no. And then and there, I thought, oh, you guys are, you guys are in the way, man. I could be the next who was who was at the top at that time? Zendaya. I'm gonna be the next Zendaya. I'm gonna be the next. And they said no. And I harbored a lot of resentment towards them for it. But in hindsight, when I sit and I look at 16 year old Kaya now, I'm like she would have died. <laughs> Hollywood would have swallowed her up. She would have been. Hey, she would have been, yeah. Nelly says something crazy. But yeah. the man's already in jail. Let me keep my mouth shut. <laughs> I was about to say, I was about to, was about to uh, dude, my mind went dead Yeah, too. yeah. Uh, my mind so went I'm grateful, I'm grateful for them standing in the way of what I thought I wanted at the time. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the decisions that they made in terms of their marriage, again, 
I'm I'm so grateful that they prioritized themselves mm. because an unhealthy parent is very difficult. Yeah. Guys, when your parents are yeah. not in love and they stay under the same roof. Yeah. Worst experience of your life. If right now you're a parent and you're not in love and you are staying Yo, there I'm for your you. kids, you are actually hurting your kids. Tamaya Sesi or Tamaya Boot. It's true. You are actually hurting your, your kids. It's true. There's yeah, no such yeah. thing I'm doing it for the kids. Ma, Cassis, we are going through it as your kids in this marriage as well. <laughs> so, yeah. I think staying for the kids. Hmm. I, uh, it depends. Back in the day when women had no jobs. Yes. Fine. Yes. Like they no, it was no choice. Yes. Now you have choice. Yeah. Don't do it. It, it. There's no such thing. I think stay for the kids as long as you are able to make it out for them as well. Mm. Or until you are able to make it out for them. So mm. stay there until you've... You've even caught if it means yourself. Exactly. And you've gathered enough resources to be on your own. With yeah. Because I know that if my mom had left my father when I was, you know, under 10 years old, I wouldn't be where I am right now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? My lifestyle would be very different. I would have been forced to make decisions out of desperation you know what i'm saying so she stayed with him until she held until she could hold her own and until the separation didn't have a massive financial effect on mm. us social effect on us even emotional effect by the time she left my father we were like thank god thank you bro <laughs> you know? Real? so and as a child i don't think children understand that separation yes. so i think I'm I'm not totally against staying for the children because the children may not understand why, why you want to leave. Yeah. But staying until you gather enough resources for them to be stable in their father's absence or even in their mother's absence, I think. Is fine. It's fine. Um, do I have anything that I'm angry or disappointed my parents about? Um both of them. But shame, that's their own personal life choices. But yeah. they are personal life choices that affect me now. Yeah. Yeah, as a parent, your life choices that you make then for yourself can affect your kids also. Mm -hmm. So you need to think about like how the impact could be. Mm -hmm. You know, like consider all possibilities. Mm -hmm. I realize that life is very unpredictable. Mm -hmm. Consider all possibilities. So with my father, um, the thing I'm very disappointed in and angry about with him is how he used his kids as a weapon to hurt my mom mm -hmm. that's one thing like i'm very disappointed about in him mm -hmm. um that shows how unready he was to have kids because mm -hmm. like you cannot use your kids as a weapon to hurt your wife mm -hmm. he was displeased with the decision of my mom raising us herself mm -hmm. that he told her that i'm never gonna support these kids i'm not gonna do focal for them if you're choosing to raise them here in Joburg, mm -hmm. because my grandmother wanted to raise us so bad and he has mm -hmm. like a very unhealthy relationship with his mom mm -hmm. <laughs> my grandmother loved them both to be love it guys we're just love them both to be yeah um but then he made that decision and he stuck with it mm -hmm. you know he didn't pay for um school fees in primary school in crash in anything like when even when they moved like mm -hmm. when they were staying in an apartment he would pay like a quarter of the rent mm -hmm. and not buy groceries you know mm -hmm. just so that my mom struggles to support us to spite her mm -hmm. you know and that decision impacted us like once i was away of because my mom didn't tell me like i he she didn't let me know until now now that i'm old enough like she mm -hmm. she's she's now like having these conversations with me mm -hmm. and it, it part and parcels plays in how he's still even now mm -hmm. unable to show support in terms of financial support mm -hmm. because he doesn't know how important that is and the responsibility that comes with because mm -hmm. he's never had that responsibility mm -hmm. That's where I'm disappointed in him about mm -hmm. using us to hurt her. Mm -hmm. And then with my mother, I'm disappointed in her for not choosing herself. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm very much disappointed in her not choosing herself. She would have been further in life if she wasn't supporting a third child mm -hmm. in the house. Mm -hmm. But she was looking after him. Mm -hmm. She was paying the rent. She was mm -hmm. buying the groceries. She was mm -hmm. buying him clothes. She was buying everything. Mm -hmm. You know, how much financial thing is mm -hmm. is that paying for his car at some point mm -hmm. you know and like it's like what does that show like luckily we've had this conversation and she's like let me know that but like what would it, th that have shown me mm -hmm. you know like a man can walk all over me and i just mm -hmm. let it happen mm -hmm. so i'm very disappointed in her not choosing herself mm -hmm. you know if she chose herself maybe right now would have been at a better place mm -hmm. you know and 
her children wouldn't have to make certain decisions they shouldn't be making mm -hmm. you know so yeah so that's where my disappointment comes with my parents love them both has i have grace for them though because mm -hmm. i understand they were doing this thing for the first time yeah they were parenting for the first time they were loving for the first time they were marrying for the first time <laughs> yeah. so i understand and i give them grace for it yeah okay. that's a very deep question but yeah, into the into digest style. Yeah, but then, yeah, I think that's a long girl chat. <laughs> that is, that is. We can move on to our game. So our game is general knowledge, but this time we're going to have our ghost, who you guys missed very dearly. <laughs> our ghost asks us questions, and we have to say our name first in order to get an opportunity to uh, answer. Okay. The question. Just, just tell them that you're gonna ask them for them. Okay, so the ghost is gonna like write the ghost is also it's so funny so he's gonna <laughs> type out the question in the screen yeah. um because he doesn't have a mic so you all won't hear him sadly yep all right so i have eight okay Five. yeah, yeah eight is perfect. decent yeah let's go right, also oh, sorry sorry another rule you can't say your name in attempt to answer when you don't know the answer, answer. <laughs> okay the way she looked at me with the side eye like i've ever done that i need to make sure <laughs> all right you ready yes yes First question is what company was initially known as Blue Ribbon Sports? What? It's easy. Uh, Mpo, sports scene. <laughs> Blue Ribbon Sports. Yeah, that's what, have you never read the book? Like, no. you know why I was like, you no, know, I said sports scene. I thought of blue ribbon, the bread. <laughs> and sports what? scene is blue. What? So I was like, blue and blue. What? I was trying to visualize a blue ribbon and I was like, which company has a blue ribbon? As it, yeah, yeah, you can see how our thinking capacities <laughs> yeah. are different. Just girls. <laughs> right, second one is, what is acrophobia a fear of? Mpo, water. <laughs> acrophobia. Aqua. No, you said acro. Acrophobia. Oh, acrophobia. Oh. Hey, Hi I was getting there. <laughs> just, just wait a minute, guys. Wait a minute. <laughs> give us like 60 seconds, a minute, Nyana. Wait for us to say we give up. <laughs> I two more questions. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. I was like, I'm getting there, man. What is the world's largest retailer? Retailer. Mpo. Walmart. Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yo, that didn't even cross my mind. <laughs> <laughs> let me lock in, let me lock in. Okay. At, it's, four, it's 4 p.m. Who was the first president of the United States? Umpo. Was it George Bush? No, it can't be. It is George. George Wa George Washington. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Rafa, okay. okay. No, he didn't say, say he didn't say Caesar, w. Caesar, He literally said go. finish it. Get George. He's like, finish the George. Ah, Washington. Christ. Whatever, whatever. George whatever, Washington. Whatever, 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 whatever. <laughs> Who is known as the father of physics? Umpo. Newton. Isaac Newton, you want his full name? <laughs> I'm, not like, I'm not locked in, I can't lie. My brain hasn't been functioning, guys. <laughs> Clearly. Okay. And I can't even make an excuse, it's not the morning. No, you can't. You <laughs> can't. can't. Your brain has defrosted, Zero. it's after 12. Okay. What is the hardest natural substance on earth? Mpo, diamond. a diamond. Yeah. I said my name. <laughs> I know, she said the name first. <laughs> uh, uh, why are you trying to make it hard? <laughs> Look at you. DNA stand for? Mpo. Dehydronucleic acid. Never higher. Deoxyribonucleic acid. <laughs> I don't know why She's I never. said hydro. <laughs> what did you say hydro? I don't know why. I don't know why. I forgot, guys. It's been a long since I've been like that. At this point, I'm just gonna, because she's faster than me, I'm just gonna wait for her to get it wrong, then I'll answer. Ah, it's fine. How many elements are there in the previous hmm. question? Eh. Hey. Okay, go. So you answer, you answer. No, you answer, no, you no, know no. that. I told you. Did I, not say, did I not say that she's going to say okay. anything without thinking? Okay, fine. 51. 103, maybe. 102. I get the point. I was the closest. What is the answer? 118. Yeah, okay, I was the closest. Okay, fine. She's the closest. <laughs> fine. I score 4-2. 5-2. Yeah. So, okay. What is the largest organ in the human body? Kaya. Mpo. Okay, Kaya. Rock, paper, scissors. I was like, you guys didn't say that. No, I think she went first. She went first. Thanks, I went Kaya. first. <laughs> the answer. organ. Yes. Skin. Yeah. Did you know? Yeah, I also yeah. knew that. Oh, you didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I also knew that. <laughs> uh, one more. Okay. Damn. Oh. 
who is the author of To Kill a Mockingbird? Eh, hey, I don't know Kaya. your name. J.K. Rowling? No. I don't know your name. Please ca- ask to a kill different a question. Well, uh, I can't see Kamala. I also don't know. It's, um, I was just guessing. Is it a hair even? It's a he. Who? To kill a mockingbird. Mm-hmm. Do you know an author? I, uh, Do you authors? Do you know authors? <laughs> Do you authors? <laughs> Do you authors? <laughs> You'd be surprised. Who is the known father of modern physics? Modern In physics. physics. Um, Kaya. <laughs> you go. Albert Newton. No, oh, Einstein. <laughs> yeah, Einstein is sorry. I don't know why I said Newton, but I point, meant Baba, no, I meant it. But you knew which Albert I was talking about. <laughs> it was a mistake because we were speaking about Newton two minutes ago, guys. Albert Einstein. Jamazu Albert. Man. Jamazu Albert. One more just for That that is Jay, mm-hmm. a thing. Yo. Okay. What language is spoken in Brazil? Kaya. Yeah. Portuguese. Yay. 5-4, at least. See, at least I caught up. Nyana. Nyana. Who cheater? Yes. Anybody who doesn't make you win by far is a cheater. Because <laughs> we owe you in this life. We owe you. That's a bumpo. That, that answer, that Isaac Newton answer, she uh, she said her name before she knew the answer. I knew it was Isaac Newton. Who doesn't know who mm. physics? See? Hey, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, when he said when modern, the apple fell from the tree, physics, and he's like, like Elon Musk. why is the apple <laughs> falling from the tree? Oh, it's easy. I even know the story. He was sitting under a tree. He's like, why, is the, why do apples fall? And then he thought about gravity. And then and Albert, what did Albert do? Albert Einstein. Mm. He's the one who created the atomic bomb. He's the reason why the, the nuclear evolution is high. Very oh. smart man. But his wife actually helped him with the mathematics of it. She was a math genius. But you know, they, they don't talk about women. Yeah. Even Wi-Fi was created by a woman. What? Yeah. The concept of Wi-Fi. What? Yeah. Back in the days. I didn't know that. Even the person who made sure the um, um, rocket ship uh-huh. got to the moon. The person who changed the calculations what? was a woman. What? A black woman. What? In NASA. Oh, black. They yeah, never gonna yeah. give her credit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, People wouldn't never... be on the moon if it wasn't for that black woman. But yeah. anyways. Yeah. That's if there is a moon to be on. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's move into our long topic, which is standards. Beauty standards. Is it beauty, beauty standards, standards or standards in general? Beauty standards. Okay. Yes. Beauty standards. Which is, I think, long overdue. I think it should have been one of the first five topics we covered on the podcast. True, during the body so dysmorph- dysmorphia area. Yeah, something there. So it's long, long, long overdue. Cartelling a lot of beauty 20, standards. 25, but let's we go are for tired it. of beauty standards. And are we? Yes. Are we? Why? Not? Are they set for women and not for men? There is a male beauty standard. It's not that. It's I don't not think that, we've beautified yeah, we overweight have, men. But then, like, we don't go around like worrying about like their bodies as much as they worry about ours. But men worry about their own bodies as much as we worry worry about our own. Really? Yeah. You guys have like go through body things. Yeah. That's why. That's why a lot of men go to the gym. Yeah. Damn, I didn't know. Also, that. those transformation TikToks, have you not seen them? Like, you, you can't tell me those nigga transformation TikToks aren't a result of body dysmorphia, please. True. True. <laughs> it's no... just that men will change it. Whatever they are for that bike, exactly. they will change they it. They don't choose it, they change it. Which, yeah, men true. love themselves. I mean, love themselves. Ah, they will always choose themselves. I'm telling you. A man will choose himself. Very unrelated. If you think a man loves you, it's because he's choosing himself. (laughs) What? And choosing himself means choosing you at that time. Ooh. Yeah, that's a chat for another day. Stay tuned on Bird Digest for more. Ooh. Damn. (laughs) Does that mean I have to be single? You want the way I'm single now? Ah, my sister. <laughs> it's a cold world. You see, the more my frontal lobe develops, it's harder to date. Oh. She said, she said again. <laughs> no, I said men will always choose themselves. And if you think a man loves you, it's because choosing himself means loving you at that time. He's not the man is not even disagreeing. <laughs> He's not even denying. He's not even He's making the calculations. <laughs> 
like mm. what if the criteria for which he chooses himself changes and therefore you no longer fit exactly that's why they they can cheat in marriage or love someone else in marriage and all those things because we put their feelings first we put the kids first we put everything first even a man supporting his kids it means choosing himself at the time is to choose his kids you're depressing me beauty standards <laughs> um <laughs> What about them? What about them? We do have some guideline questions. You want to yes. ask? Yes. What are they? What are beauty standards? I think uh, the criteria by which society decides that somebody is attractive. Mm. Very shallow, very stupid, and they change over time. You'll be the beauty standard now and stop being the beauty standard later. You know, interestingly, did I cut you off? You can carry on. Did I? Kind of, but it's fine. You can continue. Okay. So um I was about to bring up like in Miami like I saw a TikTok of this girl to my body beauty standards in Miami oh, okay. and she was like during the Kim Kardashian BBL times mm-hmm. it was like the center of BBLs mm-hmm. so the beauty standard mm-hmm was the bbl mm-hmm. like you needed to have like a nice body and everything and the beauty mm-hmm. standards are so intense in miami mm-hmm. that you don't enter certain clubs if you don't meet the beauty standards they'll literally say no you can't come to this club because you're fat they'll tell you at the door straight up they'll say it's fake even restaurants mm-hmm. it's full at this restaurant then a the moment like a beauty standard girls they come mm-hmm. all of a sudden they space yeah so like it's that deep in miami you know and now the beauty standard has changed to being back to the white skinny girl okay <laughs> <laughs> that is such a blue so it's changed to be like the white skinny girl beauty standard mm-hmm. you know like you saw even with like the kardashians um removing all the bbls and doing all those things mm-hmm. it's because they're going back to that beauty standard mm-hmm. and now the bbl yeah. yeah, even Ice Spice. But Ice Spice is oats. in the gym. Ice Spice is in the gym. You say that? Somebody said she's in the gym. So that's why she's lost so much weight. But do you see like how like it, everything changed so drastically? Mm-hmm. Like if you look at all these people, um, they are losing weight. Yeah. Like they're becoming smaller. It's like being smaller mm-hmm. is like now the it thing. Mm-hmm. Now the Kardashians or Beyonce or Ice Spice, even Megan the Stallion, she's smaller. I remember before she was like, Valamshus, that's mm-hmm. that's why she's the stallion. Now she goes to the gym, she's smaller. Like everybody is like trying to like mm. peg, like mm, a man. They wanna like, piece like themselves. I get the the um, what you call this then what Nara Smith thing. Mm-hmm. You know, like this model like thing is now what's like trending. That's what's seen as like this white girl. Who's who's the studied it? She's the um, Daughter of some famous black man, but she's white. Guys, you don't know this girl. She had like a wedding, a fancy ass wedding. You don't know her. Yo, I forgot their names. Guys, if you guys know those girls, please. Sophia that, that, Richie. Sophia Richie. You know this Sophia Richie. Now being like the the white core is mm-hmm. in. Like the mm-hmm. blonde girls are it's their time to shine. Mm-hmm. And now the beauty standard is swaying more oh. towards them. I was unaware of that. I still am kind didn't pay attention. I, I knew I saw the the rise of people using Ozempic. Mm. But I didn't... I, I, I guess I didn't tie that to a shift in the beauty standard per se. But I, I have seen a lot of people take out their implants mm. and they go to the gym. They botox the everything. Being no black no, is no longer beautiful. <laughs> in the world, that's a joke. It's a joke. The previous beauty standard was set by us. <laughs> I, d- I don't. I, you know, I'm I'm gonna slightly agree with our ghost in saying it might be a white agenda, because a lot of a lot of these beauty companies profit off of a kind of insecurity. Mm. So it it I think every beauty company profits off of an insecurity, whether it's. Um, whether it's pubic hair, whether it's smile lines, whether it's a symmetric a non symmetrical face, whatever asymmetrical, asymmetrical face, all of these beauty companies profit off of that. But funny enough, um, beauty standards also have a biological basis, hmm. which was very interesting to find out that the beauty in uh, the beauty standards are influenced by what um, the human brain registers as health and fertility so Mm. an indication of health in a woman would be clear skin 
biologically that is what would attract the man to her because he assumes mm. she's healthy what al- would also in- indicate fertility in a woman is the hips is the breasts the voluptuousness and that's would that's what would attract him on a biological basis so there is a standard of beauty that is i would say justifiable because it's what because we are in our animal nature prone to choose those whom we are most biologically compatible with mm. and though that that's the criteria for it now visually is the skin, the skin is the body, body is the hair is you know the diet and all of that men are less likely or let me say at, uh, the animal instinct in a man is less likely to choose a woman who's overweight because he um registers that as not being healthy mm. or he's le- less likely to choose somebody with um um unclear skin with spots and all of this because he registers that as, as unhealthy so it's not it's not a choice that he makes not a conscious choice that he makes in fact choosing the opposite would be the conscious choice mm. so choosing to be with a woman who doesn't present as the um healthy I want to say statistically healthy would be the conscious choice yes. mm. but choosing a woman who is voluptuous or is fit or you know her features look very feminine is the subconscious choice i did not know that until a few days ago so there are certain parts of the beauty standard that will always exist mm. i don't think there is a time in the near future where we will normalize acne, acne as beautiful because we don't we, we don't associate, associate that with health now that you think about it i feel like the things you've just mentioned have stayed consistent over time in yeah. terms of beauty standards because yeah. um, i'm i love history so i know beauty standards of different areas in mm. different areas you mm-hmm. know because like sometimes like there's beauty standards that are set by the monarchies at the time mm-hmm. so during the first queen Eliz- was it no queen victoria mm-hmm. queen victoria was a bigger woman mm-hmm. you know so then she's the queen what mm-hmm. is more who's the m- more important woman in the country mm-hmm. besides her mm-hmm. who's more who do you want to please more in the country besides her she's mm-hmm. the queen mm-hmm. so the beauty standard shifted to more oversized like you yeah. know the cleavage she, she's the one who made the cleavage I really think. Mm. Latilla cleavage, the cleavage, the everything, because she was voluptuous, yeah. you know. Yeah. So that was the beauty standard at the time, because it's like, it's inf- it's influenced by people we look up to. Mm-hmm. So at the time, she was the woman that was looked up mm-hmm. to, and that was the beauty standard. Yeah. Like in 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 Europe, having a big forehead was a beauty standard. Really? Mm. She go to Europe. Like, cause it made women like you know men loved women who looked like kids. You know, like the more <laughs> you look like a child, the better. That's so scary. Like the pedophilia is very big. That's in men. so scary. So like. A bigger forehead yeah. made you look have an egg shaped head. Uh-huh. So the egg shaped head looks looks more youthful. Mm-hmm. You know, hence you saying biological mm-hmm. youth is associated with like health and mm-hmm. fertility, fertility and stuff. Yeah. So women back in those days, if you're rich, they used to cut off their hair and mm-hmm. they'd use tweezers to pluck off their eyelashes and their eyebrows. But if you're poor and you couldn't afford a razor, they literally t- plucked out, they would pull out their hair. Yeah. And pluck individually each eyebrow. Mm-hmm. Lash plucked out. That's insane. That was the beauty standard. That's insane. Would you go to that extent to meet a beauty standard? No. No. I, I, I think know. I've I've never been swayed by beauty standards ever in my whole life. And it's, and I think it's because I only really grasped the idea of physical beauty late. I think mm. I grasped it when I was 16, 17. That was the only time that I woke up to my own beauty. I didn't consider myself attractive until I was 17 years old. And that's very late. So by by virtue of not considering the idea of beauty altogether, because I, I grew up, and I think this answers the question of how your environment influences how you view beauty. I grew up in an environment where looks weren't prioritized, you know? I grew up in, <laughs> my parents didn't prioritize my looks. They cared more about my grades and my performance and all of this stuff. My classmates didn't prioritize looks. They priori- prioritized grades, social standing, artistry, whether or not you could dance, whether or not you could perform. All of these things were all more important than the, the what is it called? The Skotani movement didn't hit my primary school. We didn't care about that stuff. We cared about sports. We cared about 
grades. We Please cared about all of that. the primary school. <laughs> <laughs> so the the idea of beauty, I only really started posting on Instagram in 2018 when I was 17 years old, 16 years old, I mean. Yeah, when I was 16 years old. So all of this new stuff is really new to me. I've never been one to conform to beauty standards. And it's, I grew up in a completely opposite environment. Yeah. Um, I guess it just shows... The people were lacking in my environment. So the only thing they could rely on, they lack talent. Yeah. They, 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 the grades on eating. So what made you... The people from your hood are going to chow you. Is it my fault you are lacking? I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, jokes, guys. It was jokes. But then yeah. to be fair, yes, I think it's it's a it's a form of lacking. Yeah. So you're going to prioritize what you feel like you can... Excel in. Excel in, yeah. you know. So it wasn't grades. It wasn't... It wasn't athleticism. Okay. Okay. In my hood, it's different. But like, I'm talking about like the schools I went to. It mm-hmm. wasn't like your grades, your athleticism and stuff. To be fair, my primary school never prioritized really sports that much or extracurriculars that much. Mm-hmm. Um, so then like you leave kids with so much idle time. Mm-hmm. So like what they like, what they ended up prioritizing was like your social standing was based off your looks. Really? Based off how more matured you are. Mm-hmm. So like that's why you had girls dating and kissing at grade six mm-hmm. grade seven like there was a lot going with mm-hmm. i mean i was going on in my primary school yeah. there was like a a whole ganja scandal in grade seven people were selling space cookies so sniffing seven. sniffing spirits in grade seven and stuff like that the guys in my school were dating girls in high school so now you're even trying to keep up yeah. with girls in high school yeah so beauty was a very big big thing and Crazy. that could and like now the thing is like when you were smart you were mm. bullied for it <laughs> funny really? now like you were truly bullied for it um i guess you are not seen not necessarily bullied but you're not seen you were mm-hmm. not recognized it was seen as something from the back burner mm-hmm. um yeah maybe it'll attribute to maybe why probably like only six only four uh 45 or 50 percent of people i went to primary school went to varsity mm-hmm. Be- or even finish school. <laughs> so, because it was deep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was really deep. And then I got to high school, an all-girls school, on top mm-hmm. of that. that uh, beauty standards there. Mm-hmm. Guys, an all-girls school. Oh, my God. And beauty standards amplifies it. Because, mm-hmm. wow, guys. Like, it was so bad. I went to, like, ghetto schools. Like, I had, like, girls after school on a Friday mm-hmm. would go to the bathroom and roll up their skirts and put lipstick or gloss mm-hmm. and then wear, like, a cute cap. I went to school with, like, cussy hands mm-hmm. and stuff so that they can walk to the bus stop so that the guys from the other school could see them. Mm-hmm. So being beautiful was also mm-hmm. a priority then. Mm-hmm. Like, to the point where <laughs> we were segregated. There was classism. In the, we were segregated by the school. Mm-hmm. There was, like, 8191. one nine one. Mm-hmm. Those are the classes with the smart people. Mm-hmm. Everybody else was just dumb. So they put us all in the same class. I was in 8-6, the dumbest class in the... In Calling the people dumb is so wrong. Bro. But that's what the school did. I'm just saying they were dumb. I'm Are saying you? the school. Are but you? I was in 8-6, oh. to be fair. Like, I'm not talking about I was in 8-1. I'm talking mm-hmm. about the person who was in 8-6. Mm-hmm. They made us write an initial test, and then they mm-hmm. placed you based on the test. So the kids with the lowest marks were placed in 8-6. I had the lowest marks. To be fair, the teacher lost my math paper. But I had the lowest. Yeah, I told you. Important thing, we all owe him, Paul. <laughs> we owe her. I was in eight things. So it was a thing of like, now the school has already conditioned you into thinking you stupid. Like, even the other kids, I remember, used to make fun of our class the most. Like, there were rumors, like, oh, are they the kids who are the dumbest? Are they the kids who didn't pay school fees? Like, there were so many rumors about our class, and you're already conditioned that the school doesn't even think you have potential. They Mm -hmm. stopped that structure now. Mm -hmm. But what are you going to focus on? Mm -hmm. What else is there to focus? Like, the school has already said, no, we're not even going to see if you're capable. Mm -hmm. Like, the best teachers, 8-1 got the best teachers, Mm -hmm. 8-1, 8-2. We got the teachers that were lazy, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, really, we, we, we had no mm-hmm. room to, like, focus on other things. So, mm-hmm. that's the environment I grew up in. Beauty standards were everything. Sure. That makes sense, though. It, it makes sense for how, how you viewed yourself when you were younger and why you viewed yourself that way because of your environment. Um, th- on the opposite spectrum of... Not on the opposite spectrum, but I think in 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 the direct, you know, line of beauty standards is also the potential for um, body dysmorphia, mm. the potential for anxiety, 
the potential for depression, depression. for eating disorders I remember as well. they come in seven yeah <laughs> everything comes on at once so unfortunately you know we can't get rid of the beauty standard it isn't it isn't something that we are in, in control of because the beauty standard controls the markets controls capitalism it's why consumerism is a thing it's because we've made one image the image mm -hmm. and therefore every other company strives to make people think that they can obtain, obtain that, image. that image so we can't get rid of the beauty standard unfortunately what we can do however is cultivate healthy ideas of what beauty is amongst mm -hmm. ourselves on our podcasts in our communities amongst our friends in churches friend groups family that's what we can do and i think redefining beauty for yourself is where it's at as well envision what you think is most beautiful i think some of the most praiseworthy women are the women who shift that for for young girls and the first person who comes to mind for me Viola is rati okay, rati <laughs> supremacy viola davis as well but i'm just talking about essay like that, yes. rati supremacy for me she, oh, she eats she Oh my god, she came wow. with her unique style. Exactly. With her unique Oh my god, guys. I watched that girl's TikToks and I'm like, wow. Yeah. She eats. I she, was like she has an aura, an essence about her. And I yeah. feel like that's because she's herself. Exactly. So she she envisioned what beauty is like for her and she executed that according to how she sees fit. Mm. Her eyebrows are her eyebrows. Bruh. You know what I'm saying? She's been doing her those eyebrows since are her nails. Her style is her style. And so I think those are the people who help us redefine what beauty is mm. to us and we praise them because they do it despite the backlash. 2 years ago, nobody would have looked at her eyebrows and been like, oh, "Wow, I want those eyebrows." We would have been like, "Girl, you know, and, and she was doing them 2 years them. ago." Do you know what I'm saying? She kept she kept doing and then I think that's that's where it begins is redefining it for yourself. yourself. Yeah, that's beautiful. Mm. Yeah, I guess I, there's nothing more I can say. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I do think uh, we can revisit this conversation because we do have more talking points. We just did not refer to them much in this mm. episode. But um, like we mentioned earlier, we will be revisiting some topics. But let us know, guys. Um, what do you think of the beauty standard? Do you confirm? Conform, I mean. Do you not conform? Do you think they are essential to consumerism and capitalism? Do you think... We will ever be able to get rid of beauty standards, which part of the beauty standards will always exist. Mm. I think the ones about health and fertility mm. will always, always. exist. Mm. Um, oh, before before we close off, I do think, nah, 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 next time. I was about to say, we, we'll thingy, we should um, continue the conversation we had in the live update about BBLs and what wada. But mm. subscribe. Turn on the post notifications. Mm. We will talk about them again. We will. In length. We will, guys. We'll revisit. Actually, yeah. um, before you guys, like, before we end this video, guys, yeah. we're releasing plaques. Oh, yes. We are releasing some plaques, some really cute plaques. So, basically, um, the concept is you guys, t you basically, like, when you order, you choose what episode was your favorite. Mm -hmm. And I guess, like, an image will appear yeah, here right because here. we don't have them physically with them like today but yeah. then we'll show them to you guys next week so that you can see them mm -hmm. and i guess like um you guys can start ordering probably by when this video comes yeah. out and the link will be in our description so please check that out and when you do get your plaque take a picture with your plaque yeah tag us. and Let it's, us, it's yeah. basically telling us what's your favorite episode yeah what is your favorite are you able to think of it now no me neither. what's your favorite episode? me neither i it might be last week's episode about the about confronting your personal ugliness. It might be that one, mm -hmm. but let me just keep that in the air for now. Mm, but guys, we have too ugly. many nuggets in every episode, like too many nuggets. Yes. And that also, also brings me to another thing, guys. We might be doing lives this holiday, oh, yes. either on YouTube or TikTok. Yeah, one of the two where we basically revisit episodes with you guys in the conversation. Yes. So y'all are always like, oh, I wish I can sit on this couch. This is the opportunity yeah. to voice your opinions by joining those lives and actually interacting with us yeah. as we unpack every time you were angry and you said you don't agree. Yeah. It's your time. Yeah. It's your time to hash it actually, out. Actually, it's going to be so awesome yeah. to have the opportunity to join us on the live, not just comment, but you'll also be part of the live. Also, you know when we say no screen recording, it's going to be a juicy one. 
We're gonna shake it up. <laughs> We're gonna do you do the cues before we say goodbye. Yeah, so you guys know what to do. You know you must subscribe, you must like, you must comment, you must turn on your post notification, you must share the video. And yeah, those are the cues. We'll see you guys next week, Monday, 3 p.m. Bye. Bye.